fire of the day. Hey, hi. I appreciate every one of you guys logging on to a uh, little big talk with Amy. It, this is kind of new for me in the sense that we've kind of changed the format. A lot of it will look similar if you guys are from coffee chats that I did a little bit ago. I did take a break during the summertime and during the school year uh, because a lot of people would be on vacation, hopefully, spending time with your kids and family just like what we did. And um, But with uh, my big charity event, Amy Roloff Charity Foundation in September and my toy drive, and of course, we were revamping a uh, little big talk. You know, have more of a web presence, have more of a style to it. So hopefully you guys will enjoy it. And as I get used to it and get going with uh, the format, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Tell lots of people and we'll have more people joining with us. But we've got a lot of shout outs that I really want to do right now. We've got people from England. Uh, Lisa, who else do we have that's on? I think we have from Indiana, the Netherlands. So we've got people all over the country tuning in. Though you can't verbalize with me, you definitely can chat with each other. Give me your questions. Give me your input. Give me suggestions that you may have or anything that's going on in your life. We'll take time to answer those and acknowledge and recognize you. But I just want to give a shout out to you guys that I think from the England, as I mentioned, the Netherlands. Indiana, probably some other states. Massachusetts, Colorado, Massachusetts, Texas, Colorado. Look at that. Red Everyone. Lion, Red Lion, Pennsylvania. And that's really one of the reasons why I'm doing little big talk. I love to talk. Um, I'll kind of dive into maybe some subjects that may feel may may make people feel uncomfortable, maybe even myself. But I think it, that's what makes this so good. It's an open forum, um, positive. I like to be positive. We can disagree, but we can agree to disagree, but just kind of that kind of format. Just you and I chit-chatting, getting to know each other, because that's one of the benefits that I got from the show, Little People, Big World, was the opportunity to meet so many of you and to have you guys tell me your stories. It's been really inspiring to me. So welcome, Little Big Talk with Amy. I appreciate it. There's no interruptions in this one. So what's been happening? What's been happening in the last several months with myself, my family, Little People, Big World? Well, hopefully, as many of you guys may know, we have uh, have been doing some updates. So that's kind of what we've been doing during the summer and early fall. It hasn't been the intense filming like we've done with the weekly series of Little People, Big World that um, we kind of hesitated and you know kind of wondered whether this would really be something we wanted to do. Uh, would we have any audience that really kind of wanted to know the updates on our family? So that we decided, uh, TLC, we kind of worked with each other. Would this be really feasible? And lo and behold, we're doing updates. We've got a brand new one coming out on January 22nd. And so that's a week from this Sunday. Uh, so tune in. It's a lot about Zach, getting to know some of his thoughts, what's going on with his life. So as a mom, I love it because it's about my boy and I even get to know a little bit more about him. And that's one of the things I loved about our show is some of these sound bites or the questions that my kids answered. I even got to know a little bit more about them than on an everyday basis. Because sometimes kids don't talk to me or parents or whatever as much as they would to someone else answering a question. So January 22nd is our new update for Little People Big World. So that's one thing that we've been doing um, over the summer. Matt, of course, has been working tremendously on the farm. We did uh, acquire a little more property. I wasn't too keen on that because <laughs> that was a lot of property. But uh, he's excited. He's, um, he, he's working hard to, to figure out what he's going to do with that. But lo and behold, I bet you we'll have a bigger pumpkin season, a bigger land to grow. Um, he's got some ideas in his mind. So you guys all have to wait and see on that one. And he definitely has a Facebook page, so he gives you guys updates on that, too. Um, I've been doing a lot with my charity foundation, catching up um, with our big event. We raised even more money than we did last year. So, of course, I'm excited because where all that money goes, and a lot of you guys made a huge difference. If um, Lisa, yes. uh, by chance, if we have Richard Stark, I think he's working. Richard Stark, I know Thank you. you are from New York or the East Coast. In fact, I can't even remember where you're from, either Boston, Massachusetts, or New York or Jersey area. Anyway, Rich, Richard, he has, I've never met him, 
but to me, he seems like a wonderful, wonderful person. I'm looking forward to going to the East Coast and maybe someday, someday meeting him. But a Facebook, you know, loves the show, watches it. He gave such a tremendous donation. Um, the first year that I started the foundation, a little bit, I think, last year, and definitely again this year. So I really want to give a shout out to Richard and thank him. But also to a lot of you guys, you know, just offering your support or, you know, some of the donations that you guys have given uh, to Amy Rowell Charity Foundation. I mean, I can't thank you enough because it truly does go to the kids. Uh, kids that are facing challenges, whether the foster care, homeless, a teen mom, um, special needs, athletics. It really goes and helps. Maybe mostly in the Portland area, but we do do other things in the country or um, overseas, mainly in the Caribbean right now, in Haiti and Jamaica. So um, we're definitely, you know, Amy's putting her thumbprint out there uh, because that's what's important to me and that's what matters to me because older kids, any kids, are going through a tough time right now. So what else has been happening? Oh yeah, I'm, I kind of got exciting news. I'm kind of nervous about telling it because if you say it too soon, then, you know, will it really come about to its completion? Many, many years I've been working on what I call a book, kind of a cookbook. I know some of you guys may think a cookbook is kind of easy, but this has been my passion ever since I was about 12, 13 years old. I love cooking. To me, it was more about, regardless of how small I was, how different I was, to me there was something about food that just brought people together, just conversation, it was that commonality, you know, with different opinions and different backgrounds, it didn't matter, because we all came together to enjoy that time together. So um, I've been working on it for a long time. I had someone else, a huge supporter, helping me with it. But I have a publisher that picked it up, so I'm really excited about it. Yeah, Yay. I'm really excited. So um, we'll see. It, we're, we're aggressive. We're going to try and get out um, a book date by Mother's Day. So if you're thinking about a new mom or your mom or anyone else, it'll, um, it'll be exciting. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Sometimes I don't even know what's happening. Uh, this is kind of the outlook, uh, the uh, cover of the cookbook, but it's even changed since this, um, since this one. But anyway, it's called short and, um, um, <laughs> short and simple. I'm a little big talk, short and simple. I'm like, oh my God, how can I remember all this stuff? But it's called uh, short and simple. And I thought that was a really cute name because it is really about how I cook. It's uh, quick, easy, you know, great things. Healthy. To me, it is more important to spend 15 minutes with your family and not worry about that you didn't have a half hour or an hour. Just that time in the kitchen, kids running all over the place, you're still talking and boom, sit down, eat before soccer practice or an activity or an event. To me, it's all good because you're cooking at home and I think it's a little more healthier. It's family time. It's a little bit better than just throwing a box in a pot and cooking it up. But you know what? Even I have done that sometimes. Rare, but I have done that. So catch up. Well, oh, kind of big changes. You, some of you guys may have already known it, um, but Jeremy is not here. I kind of miss him. I have a lot of food in this refrigerator that's not being eaten without Jeremy being around and his friends. And even Zachary's busy um, with college and working at indoor goals. In fact, he's not here this morning. So if I have a little bit of interruptions, it might be my daughter that's come down or Jacob. But it is Saturday morning for me, maybe Saturday afternoon for you. So they still may be sleeping. Um, I lost my train of thought, Lisa. Oh, so what was I talking about? Talking about Jeremy and... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where's my family? <laughs> I, I know why. You. you know why. Give me a little break it's here. It's because you're smelling the food roasting, the things roasting in the oven. You know what? You and it's time for me to go check that. You are probably That's right, Lisa, why. because I'm multitasking here because it's not like I have a whole entourage. But as you see Lisa walk behind me, mm, you can smell. The she's going to check on what I have in the oven because I am going to do a little quickie pasta kind of entree. Mm. Could be lunch, it could be dinner, it could be whatever you make it. But um, I'm loving it. I like it. And it's kind of something that I threw together. I haven't really made it before. So I've got two guinea pigs with me. So if I'm a little distracted, that's probably why. Because I don't have one person in the kitchen, one person here. But you know what? I love it because this is how I roll. This is how I work. Five more minutes. Do you think five more minutes? Yeah, okay. a little bit more on that. 
So Lisa is kind of my, what, what do we call it? A sous, a sous, sous chef? chef. A sous chef. chef. <laughs> so she's kind of helping me out there, so I'm loving it. Thanks. Um, so Jeremy is in California going to college down there studying uh, photography and film. So I think um, he's loving it. This is going to be kind of a tougher uh, semester quarter for him, so I'm giving him lots of positive thoughts because I know he's going to be great at it. And he's doing a lot of activities, and so, you know, he's doing good. He was home for the Christmas break um, visiting his girlfriend. So, yes, so we got to see her for a little bit, so that's kind of different for me. But um, seeing his friends, uh, Zachary, like I said, going to school, kind of still figuring out life, uh, working at Indoor Gold. Jacob, he is turning 15. Now, for us, 15 means he is focusing on his driver's permit. He's been focusing on that for the last six months, when he was 14. So that's making me a little bit nervous because he's my last kid wanting to drive. But for him, I'm like, a, a new school change and all that stuff, so I'm thinking, hmm, let's maintain your grades. Uh, so we'll see about that. And um, his birthday is coming up, so if I seem a little scattered, it's because I had to throw some of my notes together because we went to the movies. I took him and a couple of friends to a really great place called Cinetopia. And these movie theaters, they have lounge chairs and, you know, the chairs go all the way back. I mean, they're high, what do you call that? High back chairs? Recliners. Yeah, recliners. Um, so they're just leather. They're a little softer to sit in. And you can, it's not popcorn, just popcorn people. You can have a hamburger. You can have fish tacos. You can have nachos and pizza. Or... If you go to one of the smaller theaters, uh, you can order a lot more stuff. And some of those theaters are 21 and over, so you can have a little beer, a little wine. And But anyway, we went to Cinetopia to see Mission Impossible. I tell you, there was this one part in Mission Impossible. It almost jumped all of us out of our seats. It was so <laughs> unexpected. But I'm not going to tell you because if you want to go see it, go see it. Um, the other thing that's been going Molly, oh, she's growing up on me. We just finally went to the spa because I promised her that one of her gifts from me, because she was born on my birthday, that we would go to the spa. And she's loving it. You know, a little massage, a little pedicure, and all this other stuff. Well, her birthday's in September, or our birthday's in September, but because I had the uh, Amy Roloff Charity Foundation event, um, you know, we kind of postponed it. And then she had volleyball, and then there's pumpkin season, and then there's my toy drive, and then she's doing this, and I'm like, Really? Four months after our birthday or whatever it is, we're finally sharing that moment together. So I took her to a spa out in uh, Lake, uh, Lake Oswego. Rumi Simone loved it. Oh, I don't do this very often, but when I do, I'm like, I can see now why women like the facial weekly or every other week or whatever they do. I might get it twice a year. Um, or the massage. I'm like, oh. Oh, just all the stress just kind of goes away for a little bit. Anyway, it was a really special moment that I had with my daughter, who was getting ready to go off to college. Um, Speaking of. Um, oh, yeah, little Molly. Good morning, Molly. Good morning. She just got up, so she's giving a, get, getting herself some cereal and stuff like that. But um, she's getting ready to go to college. She's uh, applied to about seven of them. So we're getting some yes People are saying, yes, come to my college, you're accepted. So pretty soon she's gonna have a major decision as to where she wants to um, where she wants to go. And then, um, so we still have some colleges to visit because she wants to revisit a few of them. So either Matt or I or whatever are gonna kind of take her on those. So when she does make that decision, maybe you'll be the first to know or you'll find out in other ways, I'm not sure. But um, I'm going to miss that girl because she's my only girl. So, you know, just kind of real family life, just kind of things that we've already been doing, but kind of taking it to a different level when we're not doing so much TV. Um, but, you know, we do, we, 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 we're just doing the family thing. You want to give a shout out here? Sure. Just say hi. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> so are you excited about graduating? She's ready. She's so ready. She's so ready to move on, aren't you? And, oh, the thing I want to tell you about Molly, because being a little person mom, this is, like, huge for me. Now, all I know Molly, she's, like, rolling her eyes already. 
for some of you other moms, this may be a commonality. I don't know because it really depends on the style. But as a little person mom, I'm thinking, you know, Molly, my daughter, she's so balanced. She's so wonderful. But she is trying on some of my dresses. She's got the formal coming up here. Like uh, her school's like winter formal. And she's like, Mom, what dresses do you have? Because I have a lot of formal dresses, not only for my events, but I do go to other fundraising events and support them. Um, she can wear them. Molly can wear some of my dresses. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Molly can wear some of my dresses. Molly is like, what? Are five, you? five nine. Yeah, about five nine, and I'm four two. <laughs> so dresses. Molly's wearing some of my dresses. Okay, believe me, they're not mini dresses on her. These dresses on me come down to my mid calf or towards my ankle. And I'm saying hallelujah because I don't have to hem them. But on Molly, they'll come up to what? I don't know, mid thigh? Mid no, they're thigh? Down to my knee. They're or they're yeah, or down to your knee. knee. Yeah, down to your knee. So I'm excited. She, like, what? You know, I have a dress that Molly can actually wear. And she, tell you the truth, she looks better in it than I do. So I'm like, oh my gosh, Molly, you're such a beautiful girl. So you're excited, wait a minute, so you're excited about going, uh, graduating from college? And I, no. there's no way you've made up a decision on the college yet, how oh, do you know? No. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, mm -hmm. you're still waiting, and we're revisiting some of them I think you wanted to do. And I'm visiting some you haven't already visited. Yeah. Like three. Three of them? Already visited. Four. Yeah. Four. So she's trying out some colleges out in Southern California, it could be Pepperdine, Stanford, who knows, University of San Diego, some other ones. Up in Washington, she's trying out, um, she's applied some. Not so much Oregon. A lot of them are bigger. And, um. I do, you, or you have pee, but I don't know what's going on there. You don't say that, yeah. Oh. Um, but she applied at the University of Portland. So, you know, she's got a lot of uh, decision making, but I'm so proud of her because she's so smart. All of my kids are great. But, um, she's going to be my first one that directly goes to college. I'm just so excited because hopefully they pick a place that I'll come and visit. I still haven't sent Jeremy a goodie, like oh a, a, mm. a goodie box or whatever. What do you call those? Really? With a care package? Yeah, a care package. With Thank cookies you, Lisa. and Yeah, I haven't even done that yet. You haven't? Well, you know, he was home like twice oh. since September because he came home during pumpkin season. Oh, yeah. Then he came home for Thanksgiving. Then Christmas. See, to me, this is a much bigger stretch, mm -hmm. you know, of college because yeah. there's none of these... Until you spring know, break. School's out kind of thing. Oh, yeah, you have thing. to give them a care package. What are you sure. doing today? Anything? Oh, you're going to do some photography, maybe. She might get some pictures taken today. Uh, Jeremy took some of her senior pictures and is sending them on her way, and she's going to get a few more from, a, from another friend mm -hmm. that you go to school with that's kind of into photography. So, kind of helping these young people out. It's awfully wonderful, awesome. Um, okay, what else are we on to? Do you oh. want to say anything else? No, I'm good. Say bye? Bye. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, Molly. I love them. They do this for me. They don't, you know, it's not like they don't like being on TV, but it's not like they're jumping up and down and saying, yes, we got to be on TV. Yes, 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 got to be on TV. Um, but, you know, they go along with it. They do it, even for, you know, this little big talk with Amy. So I'm very appreciative of Molly and Hopefully, if Jer uh, Jacob gets roused up from bed, um, maybe Molly give him a shout out. Maybe he'll come <laughs> by and say hi. He's got longer hair now. He's going to public school, which is a big eye opener for all of us, Jacob and me. And um, so, wow. Um, I don't know. I'm still like kind of in shock. But he's hanging in there. He's doing good. A lot of people know him. And he's holding his own. He's got, you know, a few good friends and that he's made and everything. So I, I'm really proud of him. This was a huge adjustment and I think a good adjustment too. Um, but I worry about him every day because I guess I think I'm more worried about it than he is. But he's really doing good at the public school. Lots of learning and it's going to be exciting to see what my youngest wants to do. Um, Lisa, if I could give you a shout out, those may need to go in just a little bit longer. Okay. Did you put a fork in them? Um, I didn't, but the onions were getting kind of browned on okay, the ends, that, that, but I'll that, put them back that's in. That's okay. If you could put them back in and maybe use a fork just to maybe see about the um, the butternut squash, if that's you know palatable enough. But I think they need to go in there a little more. Mm -hmm. Soft. 
I'll put them in just for a minute. Yeah, Probably if you a could. Lower maybe or no. Okay. That or I might because it's on roast. It is. I was hoping they brown a little bit more. I think I have a funky oven. Oh. Oh, the other thing about little big, um, little big talk with Amy too. If you guys don't know, um, Lisa, she like has to travel at least a half hour, maybe an hour, depending on traffic, uh, to come all the way to help me out with this. And Rich, um, who is my, I call him my techie guy, probably a more professional, you know, uh, title to it, but I call him my techie guy because he handles all of this. He um, designed, you know, some of the logos for a little big talk, um, uh, setting up the internet, you know, getting stuff out there, and, you know, he's doing some other, you know, work for me, you know, sooner or later, you're going to see some really cool websites. And I'm excited about that, but it takes a little bit longer than I thought, both for my charity foundation and mine. Because when you don't know about, you know, the website, internet, you're like, okay, two weeks. Really? No. All the coding, it takes a lot longer. So you'll see some exciting things here. Michelle. But little big talk um, happens in my kitchen, in my house. It's familiar to you guys that watch Little People, Big World so I just thought it'd be cool. And, you know, once um, we get going with this, especially during the summertime, we may do some live stuff. And um, are we still on? Oh, we are. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Lisa did something. I touched something. On Lisa the did something. Follow prompter. It's like, Probably. why does she touch the tech stuff? <laughs> Richard told me to. Leave it to Rich. But anyway, um, <laughs> some of the things we'll do with Little Big Talk, too. We'll have guests like we did before. Uh, I might be on the road. And we might do some pre-filming. And instead of seeing me, we may pop in that um, um, video that we have filmed or other pictures just to, you know, just to kind of shake it up a little bit, just to give you guys a different view that I am out and about, just not in my house all the time, either filming or working on the computer and stuff like that. So a little big talk, um, we're going to try and have some, some cool things happening, but like anything else that will take time. Besides Lisa and Rich. I have Rochelle. Rochelle is awesome. Awesome admin. She helps me with my charity foundation. In fact, she may be doing stuff prior to a little big talk when I've got on this morning, updating, showing pictures. Yes, Lisa even took a picture of me. Did it go up? Yeah, I think Rochelle. Ask if anyone had seen that on Yes, Lisa took a picture of me before I had makeup on, Bathroom. my robe, and I don't know what happened to me, but I did not wake up in time. But hopefully I'm a little more beautified but to tell you the truth I do not have a makeup person I do not have any of those people here it's just pretty me myself and I <laughs> so hopefully I look a little bit different than when you saw me in the robe in my front door answering when she rang the bell so hopefully I look a little better than that well you know as this is the new year I thought this was a perfect timing for launching little big talk name chain from coffee chat I kind of like it because it's a little bit of talk from me it may be big talk about some, you know, kind of more thought-provoking, heavier subjects. Or more little talk from me. And then I have a guest who's bigger than me. So a big person. So a little big talk. I thought that was cute. And um, I thought this uh, the new year would be a great year to launch that. But as we go into the new year, as you guys celebrated and said Happy New Year and maybe parties or had friends over, just enjoyed family time. We always talk about resolutions or goals or I'm going to do something inspiring and, you know, whatever it may be. But what does that really mean? I mean, I try to look up these words like resolution, meaning this is it. I've made an opinion. I've expressed myself. This is what I'm going to do. But when you come across with the resolution as being so definitive and so this is it, sometimes that can kind of set you up for like failure. It's happened to me a lot of times. And um, so then we kind of don't come through with the plan as to, well, resolution. How do we meet this definitive end result? Like losing weight. Okay, I want to lose 50 pounds. Me too, me too. I know, 50 <laughs> pounds. So, but what does that mean? There's a lot of process that goes into wanting to lose weight or wanting to change me or wanting, uh, you know, a house clean or, or something of that sort. And so I think sometimes that's what sets us up for failure because we really don't have a plan in order to accomplish 
that resolution and we may want it done right now or a much shorter time than it really takes to make those types of changes or, or setting that kind of definitive resolution. And so to me, I thought, what's my goals? Goals to me are things I'm striving for, I'm working for, it's a process. It kind of gets you going more into these baby steps. In a sense though, they all mean the same, but I think it's the word, uh, how, uh, what we interpret those words meaning. You know, goals are results and achievement or an effort directed towards something. Um, obviously, goal to me is like soccer goal. Hello, we got points. Woohoo. But goals to me is a process. I've already got kind of an idea of what I want, but sometimes with goals, do we actually know what our end result is? So that's kind of a, a, a thing that we have to focus on um, um, for goals. And then the other thing is inspiring. I want to, some people say, I want to be more inspiring. I want to do something that's inspiring. But a lot of times I think people think of inspiring as being this big, lofty thing. I have to be, uh, do a great big thing or make a big difference in someone else's life or, you know, donate a lot of money or whatever it may be. But to me, if you even have the desire to want to inspire somebody, just by picking up the phone and calling a friend you haven't seen in a long time. The thing that um, bothers me the most about the things that I want to do about inspiring, I have a wonderful, great friend in Arizona, my childhood friend, and she has gone through a huge thing this past year. She found out that she had breast cancer, and I'm like, wow. Uh, cancer did run in her family, so that's always been in the back of her mind. I can remember going through college, uh, talking to her about that, and her occasionally mentioning that. But um, she went through, um, I don't know, a radical, I guess, a double mastectomy, and she's going through, what, her about her sixth or seventh chemo? But her attitude, her positiveness, her determination that she is going to beat this, I am inspired by her determination that, you know what, life is still great. Life is um, worth, you know, going after, doing your best each and every day. Even when she doesn't feel like it, even when she's worn out and tired, probably feels sick. But I'm so happy that she is getting through this so far. I'm looking forward to a wonderful year for her. But sometimes the little things in your life can be inspiring. Maybe um, doing the most littlest things for someone or saying hi to someone at your church or an event or someone that you know that would just like someone to talk to. Not get input from you or get advice, but just someone to vent to. So, you know, there are many different ways that you can inspire someone if that's one of your goals, one of the things that you want to do. Because if your goal doesn't exactly happen, you are still striving for something. And so, um, so anyway, those are my thoughts on the uh, New Year resolution, goals, and inspiration. And I'll talk, continue to talk a lot more about that. And I'd love to hear what your goals are or what your resolutions were this new year. Or how do you want to inspire other people? Oh, oh is this a, oh better? yeah, perfect. Okay, okay, good. She All took right. out my um, butternut onions from the oven, so that's going to be my uh, cooking segment here in a little bit. I read some great inspirational stories, even on the internet, but even some of you guys. Um, my internet's down, so I can't get to all of you guys. But like Christina, she uh, uh, um, Facebooked me on my fan page. In fact, some of you guys can look at this on one of my uh, taglines that said, What inspires you? For 2012. Christina, um, tackling projects maybe a little bit at a time instead of maybe tackling all of them, all, you know, all these big projects or all at once. Um, she'd like to keep her house a little more clean, maybe be a little more organized. I can give her a high five on that one because that's definitely what I need. If you guys could see my office now, but I'm hoping to get there. Just being more of, uh, you know, maybe being she wants to be a better mom, a better wife, and maybe a better herself. But I think before you can really do that, what is it about you that you like? What is it that you like about being a mom or being a wife? 
kind of focus on that, kind of go to a positive in those different things. And I think that will help you believe that you are a good mom, that you are a better mom, or the things that you are doing uh, as a wife to your family, to, well, to your spouse, or to um, who you are with. Because um, once you focus on the one positive thing about being a wife, then you'll realize, you know, I haven't done that in a long time for him or whatever. And um, it'll inspire you to look at the different things that you used to do, maybe get back to doing those. So, Christina, I, let me know how's it going. Karen, um, I believe her husband may have passed away, but she wants to publish a children's story. I'm not sure if it's by her or her husband. Um, but and then donate some of the proceeds to the big brother big sister because her son has a big brother I thought I don't know about you, but that inspires me to keep going with Amy Roloff Charity Foundation and the other things that I do the other thing is um, um, A lot of you guys said your kids or your grandkids or your grandparents or even your parents have inspired you and maybe that's an inspiration that you need reminding of to help you do your best in 2012 whatever your project is whatever your work goal is whatever your uh, support for your kids or whatever you're doing in that thing I'm sorry I'm missing some of those things you're que queuing me on uh, Lisa hey. uh, one last thing because we've got it I tell you this hour goes by so so quick uh, Kathy I guess she just had triplets I don't um, and I'm like, congratulations on the triplets. But someone coming uh, from having twins, and as, as more of the stories we hear about ha uh, other people having multiple kids, more than twins or even triplets, it is a miracle. It is a blessing that um, some of us are able to have healthy kids. But there are times, even with twins or even with triplets, you do run into some complications or some medical issues. And I tell you, it tugs at the heart it's hard, especially when they've got to stay in the hospital for long-term periods of time. So Kathy's goal, I'm not sure if all of her kids are still in the NICU or if one of them, you know, sometimes we don't even need those details. But her inspirations, because she's either gone through that or her kids are there, is to help other moms. Give them maybe that support system of um, facing that their kids in the, are in the NICU unit and just be an encourager, uh, just helping them, you know, hang in there and just be positive and uh, maybe prayerful that um, her kid, you know, these other mom's kids will, you know, um, be okay. I, I'm feeling it because my boys, Jeremy and Zachary, were in the NICU unit for two weeks. Um, as, as, as awful as I felt about that, it was a blessing because... Um, it enabled me to heal up because I had to have a C-section. So I went back, spent all my time at the hospital, but I was able to get that rest that I needed. So when they were home, thank God, they were able to come home and come home healthy. Um, I was ready to go. I was like, come on, bring it on. I'm ready to be a mom. So I'm praying for Kathy. I'm hoping her triplets are well and all the other moms that are finding themselves in the NICU unit. So let's give some shout outs. Do we have any shout outs to give uh, Lisa or uh, any thoughts from anybody? We have a uh, happy birthday to Rich's mom. Oh, happy birthday, Rich's mom. If you Rich are Rosa. on, hello, hello. Thank you for tuning in to Little Big Talk with Amy. Um, I won't ask you your age because I bet you are 59 and counting. How about that? Uh, we've got Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Oh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. I'll give you guys a big mm -hmm. shout out. I was just out in your area, I think this past August. Oh, no, October, doing Smart Woman, Smart Money. Your treasure, the state of um, Idaho. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, your state treasure for Idaho does a wonderful thing about setting up these programs, uh, these con the two conferences, one in Boise, one in Coeur d'Alene, about helping mo women understand finances better, investing, and you know, all that other stuff. Pat from Plainville, Connecticut. Oh, Pat, Plainville, love it out in their East Coast. If Peter is out there from Long Island, Peter, love ya. I'm so glad to still stay in contact with you. Lucci from the Netherlands. One oh, of our Lucci, returning. Netherlands. Oh, you know what? I have to get back in contact with the people that I visited out in the Netherlands. 
and just give them a shout out, email, Facebook or whatever, and say I'm so appreciative of them bringing me out there. I, it's already been two years, I think. I can't even believe it. Well, Love we, your area. Beautiful. Luke from Hampshire in England. Oh, England, Hampshire. Yeah. I don't know where Ham- Luke, hi. I don't know where Hampshire is, but every time, it's so funny. Zachary, he lives and breathes and has a passion for soccer. So anytime I hear about England, I'm like, okay, how close are you to Chelsea, Newcastle, or Manchester? I always think about, you know, the soccer or football, as you guys would call it. Okay. And we also have uh, Sweden, Michigan. Oh, Michigan, Michigan. Fenton, Michigan. Oh, Fenton, Michigan. I know exactly where you are. I think you guys are kind of like southeast of Detroit, Michigan. I'm coming back home. I'm coming back home in July. Um, going to my Mackinac Island because I love that place. I'm going to kind of tour a little bit more maybe up in the UP. If you guys don't know what the UP is, it's called the Upper Peninsula. Because um, my plans for 2012 is to strengthen and make Amy Roloff Charity Foundation even stronger. Keep building that up. Because my heart for this year is probably more for the older kids, like 12 to 18, 21 years old, who you know, are really going through some tough things and just supporting them, Uh, homeless, transitional, um, teen moms, um, and um, just some other challenges that they are facing. So we're uh, not refocusing. Uh, Our aim is going to be a little bit stronger in in those areas, but still supporting some smaller organizations all around. And it all depends on how much money we raise. So you guys are ever thinking about making a donation, I can honestly say it's all volunteer and it truly goes towards the kids. So just go to my um, Amy Roloff Charity Foundation website and that's amyroloffcf.org. Yeah. We have yeah. one question, okay, sorry. Oh yeah, um, questions, questions. Bindi, Give me your input, ideas, anything. Bindi the Boo Bear would like to know how you feel when you are out and people come up to you to say hi. Oh, Bendy the Boo Bear, do I got that right? Yeah. Boo Bear. It kind of reminds me of calling the TV the boob tube, because that's what okay. my dad called it. But um, Bendy the Boo Bear? Yes. That kind of reminds me of someone that helping kids, you know, like boo-boos? You know, yeah. their boo-boos? Yeah. Anyway, um, you know, I don't mind that at all. And that's really an interesting question, because, um, you know, before the TV, I tried so hard to fit in and just blend in with everybody, you know, going to the shopping, grocery store, the mall, to an event or whatever. That at that time, yes, it did bother me because I'm like, oh my God, someone's noticing me. I'm going to be sticking out like a sore thumb or whatever. I was really probably a lot more conscious of that. I mean, all the way up to, you know, being an adult and even a mom because I just wanted to do my own thing. But with the show, it that has really helped me to be more appreciative of kind of my way helping others find out you know about being different or what they liked about the show or any questions about the family or how do I do this or how do I fly how do I put whatever it may be so no I I am most appreciative I think the thing that probably bothers me the most when people come up is if Lisa I'm talking to you yes and we're just talking and having a conversation how are you doing oh you like the show great and someone else were to come up to me and just butt right in or tap me on my shoulder or whatever and say, oh, I've got a question because I'm like, wait a minute here. Lisa or the someone is just as important as this other person. And if people don't know me, I will get to that other person. I have extended to say to talk a little bit longer than I should, but oh well. <laughs> um, but, you know, I so when people interrupt me when I'm talking to someone else, it's probably what bothers me the most. I could have tons of people come up, and I'll do my best, unless I'm in a hurry or catching a plane or something. Um, I, I love the question because it inspires me. It, it kind of, it's really just broadened my horizons of all sorts of people out there. And, you know, we're all good if we just focus on doing the great things. So, yeah. I, I love when people come up to me because, you know, whether it's the show or not, I'm more appreciative that, you know, we, we, we banter back and forth and we can help each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so those were definitely inspiring stories from uh, people that Facebook me on my fan page. So tell other people to kind of like uh, Amy Roloff's uh, Facebook fan page. In fact, I really got to get a different picture for that. 
because it's too similar to my other one. Yeah, let's do I know. That. I've I've got to um, get creative. Yeah, I do have to get creative. Yeah. You're right. Where's the hat? Where's those crazy sunglasses? Oh. I should go up in Jacob's room. I think he's got some crazy one. So look for a crazier picture on my Facebook fan, fan page. <laughs> um, so thank you for giving me those inspiring stories. You know, and what the reason I bring up, uh, you know, what inspires you, because I think that's a good start, and it's a dryer. Okay. I think that's a good start and a good, like, um, starting point for what you plan to do for 2012. Uh, because sometimes we need to hear other people's stories or what other people are doing to say, boy, what, what is it about my life that I want to change? Or what is really good going on in my life and I want to do better? Or what is something that I really, you know, I want to get that out of my life. It, it's, it's cluttering. Or, unfortunately, maybe it is someone in your life that, you know, it, it's like you've taken so much ownership of their thing. It's like, I can't do that anymore. i got to take more ownership of what I'm doing. So, to me, I bring up inspirational, you know, giving um, uh, stories from other people that uh, were on my Facebook fan page. Because, tell you the truth, it's what really helps me to focus about, well, oh, I've got this whole year. I've got this canvas out there that, you know, I still got to do the same old, same old thing. I mean, you know, life doesn't stop and you start completely all over. For some people it does because you're making major changes in your life. But for me, you know, I still got to, you know, wake my kids up in the morning, get ready for school, still do breakfast, uh, still cook dinner and, you know, all this other stuff. So my plan for 2012 is to make ARCF much bigger and stronger and hopefully reaching out to other people to really believe that I may be like kind of an umbrella and hitting some key um, uh, areas that I think kids are facing challenges and could really use the encouragement, support, and supporting other organizations. Um, because money is tough. Uh, the economy is tough right uh, out there right now. So instead of donating to all these you know, different places, ARCF. Um, the other thing is I've got a cookbook coming out, so I'm going to be doing a lot with that this year. I'm so, so excited. Um, you never know. We might be doing some more updates on Little People Big World. I have no idea on that. But like I said, our next one comes out January 22nd. So tune in. I would love it. You'll get to hear a little bit more about uh, Zachary. You know, Matt, he's, you know, he's doing a lot on the farm. He's really, you know, we're both really vamping up our speaking engagements. He really reaches out to um, corporate, corporate organizations, you know, some other um, conferences and stuff like that. Um, my speaking engagement probably gears more, he gears towards the colleges too, depending on the organization or the college itself. Um, my speaking engagement will gear more towards the colleges, um, diversity, we both speak on diversity and inspiring and motivating people. Um, I do women conferences, women's group organizations, business organizations. So, you know, we're both doing our speaking engagements and um, really building that up now that we got a little more time to spend on it and not so much with uh, TV going on. Um, but he's really doing a lot on the farm. And, you know, he'll give you updates on um, his Facebook fan page. So, you know, keep doing that. He loves that building. He loves those big machinery and He's getting a little more worn out, though, the older he gets, but that's what he loves to do. Um, I, of course, would love to get back to travel. I love traveling. Just absolutely love it. In fact, 2013, I may be taking a big trip because both Matt and I bought some travel packages from my auction event. So we may be, um, so, you know, we support it, too. So we may be going to Jamaica, and I might be helping out... Um, uh, we may be going in Jamaica in 2012, um, and we might do a family vacation, but we haven't quite nailed that down as to where or what we're doing on that. You know, the kids are kind of off on their own, and I might take uh, Molly down to Mazalan or Mexico because um, she is studying Spanish, and um, so who knows? You know, she's getting ready for her college, so August we're not doing anything because Molly is very focused getting ready, and she may have to show up at her college in late August. So just really making sure that Molly is together. But speaking engagements, I usually sometimes take an extra day and just visit the area that I've never been to. 
Florida? Florida, I'd love to go. Renee, Jason's mom. I'd love to go see you, Renee. Uh, you keep inviting. Yeah, Renee Kennedy. Uh, you keep inviting us, but someday I'm going to go down and see you. I've got a speaking engagement in Kentucky, kind of by Shepherdsville. And this is a wonderful speaking engagement um, because it's, a, it's really supporting, which sometimes can be a hidden um, um, kind of challenge in women's lives, and that's um, domestic violence. So I'm going out there to support them, um, help them uh, bring awareness to that topic and that situation that's happening to women out in their area and a fundraising event. So I'm really excited to be and humbly um, honored to be asked to do that. So that is, um, I think that's coming up. Mm -hmm. I can't remember the date, but that's Shepherdsville, so I'll let you guys um, know about that. Um, okay, I'm trying to keep track of my time. Sorry, people. Lisa is pointing and shouting to me, and I'm like, oh my gosh. Well, I did say I was going to have a cooking segment. So just to kind of get this three quarters, you know, wrapped up for you guys, I just wanted to do a little bit of an intro to Little, Pe um, little Big Talk. I keep saying Little People, Big World, but Little Big Talk. It, it's going to have a little bit of me talking about, you know, what's going on in my day, my life, maybe some of my friends, the family. But sometimes I don't want to give too much because I usually want to ask their permission if I can do that. Um, because, you know, that's their life. They're older, and I want them to be okay with what I talk about when it comes to my family, Matt, and the kids. And um, just giving you a topic, I wanted to make this little big talk a little more general just to get me back in gear, but also to build up momentum of hopefully having you guys enjoy what I have to say and some of the topics that I'll bring up over time. But like I said, shout outs to whoever's on. Lisa will let me know. But I would love, like, some, what's going on in your life? What is um, an issue or a challenge that you're facing? What is inspiring you? Or just something fun you did? Or a travel trip that you did? Or, or so feel free to give me your input. If we don't get you on, you know, um, this current little big talk, I'll definitely write some notes down and we'll write some notes down and love to give you a shout out next time. We'll be putting out a schedule as to when this will be on. Some of the little big talks, maybe just a video of me. Because like I said, Lisa and both Rich travel to get here. And, you know, they've got a family life too. And um, we're all doing this volunteer for right now. And so we'll be, we'll be looking forward to getting this bigger and better and getting some other people on board to kind of support this at a, a, at a deeper level. So um, what am I cooking? Uh, I like quick meals a lot of the time. But I also like cooking big meals because especially for that Sunday dinner or when you have time. So I'm cooking a pasta dish. I kind of, you know, saw this. Um, someone was cooking this and I kind of saw this. So I threw in some other things that I like. And um, so this is a pasta dish. I'm using butternut squash, uh, roasted butternut squash and onions. I'm putting in a little thyme in there, you know, salt and pepper. Just a, just a tad of garlic because I love garlic. I love it. The smell of garlic. Butternut squash to me has that that earthy, but kind of that sweetness to it, especially when you grill onions. You know, when they're um, olive oil, they, they bring out their, their flavor, their, their sweetness to that too a little bit more. Salt and pepper. And then I'm adding goat cheese. I must say, Lisa is not really a fan of goat cheese. But you know what? We did have goats. Eh -eh. <laughs> They're making fun of me. And um, we did have goats. I say we did because to tell the truth, they weren't our goats. So I'm not sure if the uh, farmer and the person that brought some of these animals um, have taken them away to his place or if we still have our goats. But Matt built this really cute goat walk. I know, it's just so cute. But we had like five goats. So just to tell you, the goat cheese did not come from my goats. <laughs> I bought this from the store. But I have goat cheese in there, and so I thought it was kind of cute with this dish because, you know, kind of live on a farm, and we had goats. But a little time, so hopefully um, it'll be good because I kind of winged it, and so I'm not sure. So why don't we take a break? If we don't have any shout-outs or any input or questions, you have to say hi. I am going to the kitchen. Say hi to Toby from Texas, BVI trip. Toby's on. Toby? Hi, Toby. 
Hey, great to great to have you on. I was going to say great to see you, but you can see me, but I can't see you. Hey, thanks for joining from Texas. I have a lot of friends down in Texas. In fact, every time someone tells me where they're at, I, I try and do a story because I remember going to Grapevine. I was down there for um, a board meeting, not my board, but someone else's board, and um, Grapevine, loved it. Texas, I mean, it, it, the, the, the one street remind me of like Nashville. Everyone thinks Nashville is this big city. Well, the core of Nashville is this one little street with these, these, these pubs and bars and music playing and country music, loved it. Well, Grapevine reminded me of that because uh, these guys, uh, we just sat down and talked to these other guys. They were riding motorcycles, and so I got to ride a Harley and all this other stuff around town with them. I just had so much fun. Anyway, hi, Toby. And Ella from Florida. Um, Reno. Oh, someone's on from Reno. So hi, Reno. Uh, Reno, Reno. Nevada. Tahoe area. Isn't that from Tahoe? Yeah, you're not too far from Tahoe. Because um, when I first married Matt, you know, we lived in California, but went to Tahoe a several times to go skiing and everything, and we definitely stopped by Reno. Fun place, cool place. I'd rather live there kind of than maybe Las Vegas, because you can have a little more of the mountains and a little more weather change. Tara, Benton, Michigan, love you. I will always love my Michigan, because that's where I'm from, and, you know, you're just, that's where I'm from. My folks live in Chelsea. Uh, Jeff Daniels went to his Purple Rose Theater. Oh, it's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful place. Great Lakes, fresh water. Mikal from Sweden. Mikal, if I said that right, from Sweden. Mm -hmm. So as you guys know, and you guys can chat with each other too, I think. Can't they, Rich? Yeah, they're Can they chat, chat with each chatting. other? Yes, yeah. they are. Yeah, so isn't that great? I mean, who would have thought a show like this, who has everyone from everywhere, from all over the world, and you guys can chit chat with each other. So, as you guys chit chat, Lisa will shout out some questions or whatever like that. I am going to go into the kitchen and we might even see if we can roust up Jacob, but I highly doubt it because he's got friends over and most likely he probably mm -hmm. stayed up all night. One more, you have to say hi to New Hampshire. Oh, New Hampshire? That already happened, didn't it? Because they're down in South Carolina, that's right. New Hampshire? You guys just had a big event, and that was the caucus elections. Huge, huge. You guys have been all over the news, all over the map. But you know what? I want to give a big thank you to all of you guys in New Hampshire that um, participated in that process because I think it's very, very important. In fact, Molly, she's 18 now. She was so excited about getting her um, voting, uh, like what, registration. Because in our state, in the state of Oregon here, uh, we are the only state that has an election for a district congressional seat. And um, I went to a debate between the two candidates. And that was the first time I've ever been to one of those debates. Now, you take it with a grain of salt because I totally get it. Being in the media, you know, I try and talk about as much as I can about me, what I think, my thoughts. But there's certain boundaries that you kind of have to hold yourself back because, you know, everyone can take it however they want. And sometimes you don't say it right. So it was a good to go to that, the debate. And, um, you know, just see that process. No one's going to give specifics because, you know, it's, it's, that's all anyone will focus on uh, instead of the general uh, philosophy that they want to try and do and help out if they're elected. So New Hampshire, shout out. Good job. South Carolina, let's get, All right. you know what I want to do for 2012? Someone mentioned travel. It's the, my South trip. Go to St. Augustine, Florida, Savannah, Georgia. Maybe I'll meet Paula Dean in Savannah, Georgia. <laughs> and then. Is that an invitation? Oh yes, Paula Dean, Savannah, Georgia. I'd love to see you because I'm going to send your people a request and I would love it. So love it. And you worked but, with her furniture this year at the yeah, School of Dreams. Yeah, I, I supported you. donated. And, yeah, I supported you and um, loved your furniture at the Street of Dreams event that we had out here in um, Oregon here. Loved it. Great stuff. The house was beautiful. And we had some, I didn't do the cooking, but we had some cooking in there. Lots of people came to it. So big shout out. Tammy Savannah, Lefevre. Georgia. Yeah. Yeah, Tammy Lefevre from Tammy Interior uh, Motives. Worked with her. Um, yep. Worked with her. Um, but the South Turf, Charleston, South Car Charleston, South Carolina, and um, 
someplace in North Carolina. I can't remember the place. But anyway, South Trip. Let's go to the kitchen. All right. I've got some cooking to do. Oh, did we get the pasta in? Uh, no, we didn't. Oh, we didn't get the pasta in. Oh boy. Well, you know what? We're not quite done for the chicken. Or um, the pasta dish. Let me get this in. I'm not gonna cook as much. I don't have. I didn't give very good directions to my sous chef. No, oh, you did not. <laughs> you did not. So we're gonna have, have this cook for a little bit. I put in a little bit of olive oil. And usually when you do pasta, you know, be sure to, you know, give something to the water because you've got that pasta cooking and you may want a little bit of flavoring. So I do do a little bit of oil. You know, there's a big, huge debate. Does oil take away from the flavorings um, attaching to the pasta? Or does, because you put it in oil, does it all slide off? I usually put a little bit of olive oil in it, especially if you are multitasking like I often do as a mom. Um, and you let your pasta cook a little bit too long, um, it all sticks together so the oil kind of helps. So I'm going to add a little bit of salt, give that a little bit of flavor in here. Um, I probably, I've got some uh, butternut squash here and onions that I roasted. I just put a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper on that. And what I'm going to do once this pasta is done is my goat cheese. I am going to take the hot pasta, put the goat cheese in a bowl, take the hot pasta with a little bit of the pasta water, because you know what, your pasta has been cooking in the water, so don't be afraid if you need something diluted like spaghetti sauce or even to warm up this goat cheese a little bit, use some of the pasta water that you cook your pasta in to kind of create that more creamier sauce. So I'm gonna uh, use this. I've got a little thyme going on. So I'm going to put that, I love thyme, with the earthiness that I think the butternut squash is, but it has that sweetness about it too, and oh, just love thyme. I'm going to put fresh thyme, I, I used uh, uh, fresh herbs here, and then um, a little bit of chopped up parsley, a little bit in here. So you know, it's quick, it's light, if I told my sous chef, Lisa, yes. to uh, put the noodles in, we would have had this going already. <laughs> So we'll probably go back and sit over here, and she may keep my an eye. Hat. She may keep an eye on my um, on my pasta for me. We'll get this spoon out. Anything else while I'm up here? I think this is it because okay. I'm just going to tell people, you know, things that they could complement this with. Okay. So, oh, we got to turn this up, baby. Got it. Anything back here? What about the goat cheese? Oh, uh, no, the goat cheese is going to stay. I'm going to get a little bit of garlic out. Okay. Because I'm sorry to say, people, that I love garlic, but I don't want garlic to overpower this dish, so I'm just going to add just a little bit, like spaghetti sauce or something else, depending on the seasonings that I would use. I would probably use a little bit more garlic because I personally love it. Yeah. But anyway. Mm -hmm. And Lisa over here, even with the blonde hair and everything else, mm. she's Italian. Woohoo! She is definitely Italian. So okay. Get that out. So are you all good here? I think I'm good. If you want to okay. go back and chat a little more, we'll be good to go. Mm. Well, maybe once it, just tilt a little, little bit to let the steam out. Sure. Because if I have any questions, I'd love for you to help me out with that. Okay. She going over here? She's back over for a minute. Oh yeah, sorry. We're moving the camera back. I'm sorry. Rich is uh, going back. Because this dish is so simple. And that's what I'm about. Short and simple. Okay. See, that's what I love the cookbook. Short and simple. I'm short. And <laughs> believe it or not, I am pretty basic, pretty simple. I, you know, I, I love drama, but mm. the simple part of me is I love that, like, foundation. The things that you can keep your feet planted on and um, really rely on. So when life gets crazy, drama happens. And if you've seen the show, yeah, I have some drama. I definitely have some drama happening. And so I kind of, well, I kind of create drama too, I suppose. But I kind of keep myself like together, like because I've got to handle everyone else's drama. But anyway, so um, inspirations. I wanted to read you another or give you a, an idea of another story. I love this one. 
a lesson in love. This is Las Vegas. This is someone in Las Vegas. In fact, this came from sometimes when I travel, I, you know, I get like, you know, not junk magazines, but, you know, magazines that you can just flip through and do all sorts of stuff. Oh, who are you picking up? You're picking up Levi, aren't you? Sorry, Levi. Okay. Come on in. Is Levi here? You want to say hi? No, come here. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Come on in. Oh, yeah, Levi. Where's, where's Jacob? I sleep upstairs. Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay. Can you see them, Rich? Yep. This is right. my little big talk. I Say know. hi, hi, I hi. Hi, everybody. This is Levi. You guys may have seen him a lot on the show, but this is one of the friends that slept over last night for Jacob because we went to the movies. Missions Impossible, didn't we? So what are you guys off to today? My 